here's our wash. We've got 14% alcohol. We've got fairly, well, totally clear, and it's ready to go into the super reflux. This is the base of the super reflux. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the liquid in first. Once I've transferred the liquid in, I'll assemble this and then I'll tell you exactly how it works. Inside, you can see there's an element in the bottom and it's all made of stainless steel. So, we're going to transfer this. We can either jug it, siphon it, pour it, or a combination. That's the, uh, the wash, that's the uh, still. Okay, so, let's just have a little look at the super reflux and find out what it's all about. That's the clamping ring, come on in a minute. As you can see, We've got certain pipes which are attached to it. This pipe here will go to our sink, to our mixer tap, and that simply fits on there, like so. This pipe is our empty. So as the water comes through the still, it will then return, and this will go back into the sink and will be wasted. We also have at the back, where's it gone? Here we are, the outlet which is for the alcohol. So the alcohol will come out of this particular point. Now you might look at it and say, cool, why is that so short? I'll just turn it around slightly so you can see it slightly better. You can see it's not particularly wrong. The idea behind that is that you do not want that end to be in the water. Because it drips so slowly, you need to make sure that the end is well above your actual liquid. So we just need something for it to stand on. I'll put it on there for now. But you can see how at that height we let the drips come in. So that's the reason why that is a shorter pipe. What we also have, and again I'll demonstrate through the top of the system, is in this column are what's called ceramic saddles. Now the idea of the ceramic saddles is that when the alcohol vapour comes up through the bottom, through the coil and through the condensing units, it will hit the ceramic saddles. And because there's still a percentage of water in that vapour, as it hits the rough ceramic saddles, some of the water will then drip back and go back into the still. That way you're getting a higher yield of alcohol from it. And in the top goes our thermometer. So we've got the ceramic sample. So when you push this thermometer through the actual bung, we must be careful that we don't damage it on the bottom of the rough ceramic saddles. Now some people will actually put a marble in the top of this so that when they do that, if they do push the thermo thermometer down too far, it hits the marble and it won't damage it. I've not actually never felt it necessary to do that, but that's your choice. So, with the thermometer now coming out of the top, this then goes into situ on the actual machine. I'll take that off the tap for now. You've seen what I am doing there. The clamping ring comes up into position and the element takes the plug from the mains. Right, we're now on. The machine will heat up for the first hour and this wall will start to feel quite warm. And as the temperature starts to rise, you'll see that on your actual thermometer. So on the thermometer, we're looking for a distillation temperature of between 78 and 80 degrees. When it's at that level, we're getting perfect alcohol. So until it reaches that level, there is actually no need to have the water flowing. Having said that, 
I tend to find when it gets around the 50 to 60 degrees, I'll actually switch the water on and get the flow rate going so that I've got a good indication. You'll then start to see the alcohol dripping out through this little tube. The first 100 mils we want to discard. That's called the heads. There's like off flavours in it. But bear in mind, because we are using a yeast and sugar solution that we are in complete control of, we know that the amount of methanol, that's the thing that makes people go blind. And that's the thing that people talk about in the old films when they're making potatoes and what have you. And really, it is a nonsense in today's market. If we look to a bottle of commercial whiskey, the methanol from one of our fermentations is one tenth of what you would find in a bottle of commercial whiskey. If you need any proof on this, we do have it on the website. But what you'll find is, the first hour, as I say, it heats up. We then start to get near temperature. We're up around the 50. Let's switch the water on, get the water flowing, and coming through the actual condensing unit. With the condenser, you'll tend to find that there are two parts to it. You've got the top part, and you've got the bottom part. If the bottom part, you should be able to put your fingers on. The top part, if you can put your fingers on, there's something wrong. It should be really hot. So what's happening is, the temperature is totally controlled by the water flow. So if you see your temperature start to rise above the 82, you need to drop it. And all you do is you increase the flow of water. Similarly, if you see your temperature start to fall, all you do is reduce the amount of water going through. So your temperature is controlled totally by your water supply. After an hour and 20 minutes, you'll find, as I say, it will start to come through. And the first 100 mils we've discarded, and then from that point on, we need to be thinking in terms of about three, three and a half hours. And if we're using the 14% triple distilled, we're going to end up with between three and three and a half litres of 80% alcohol. Now the 80% alcohol, again, needs to be diluted and with this particular machine, we do need to carbon treat it. So we'll talk about carbon treatment in a short while. But, as I say, keep your eye on the temperature, keep your eye on your flow rate of water. The other thing that's worth doing with, the particular, with this particular machine is when you're doing it, try and make sure you've got constant flow of water in the house. If you've got people having baths, using the washing machine, you will find that you're getting fluctuating pressures in your water and that will affect the temperature. So try, until you get used to it, just make sure that other people aren't in the house using the water supply. So, that's the Super Reflux still. You'll find the quality is absolutely superb that comes off this machine. And we'll look at the carbon treatment in one second.